down and we worship you, Lord. Father, we bow down and we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're the God that killed You're the God that killed you also make a life for God. You are the lion of God. Yes, you are the lamb of God. Yes, you are the lamb of God. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yahweh. Yahweh. Hey, hey, hey. Come and do what only you can do. You are my glory oh. and the lifter up of my head. God of fire, you are the God of fire, come and do what only you can do. Mighty man of war, mighty man of war, lion of Judah, we bow down and walk. The husband to the widow, you are help to the helpless. My healer, you are my deliverer. Come and do what only you can do. You're the way, you're the way maker, our God. You are the mountain mover. Hey, you raise the dead. You make the barren fruitful. You make the barren fruitful, Lord. We call upon you, Lord. Yahweh, that's your name. Come and do what only you can do. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Good morning to you and welcome to the platform of Behold Your God. My name is Pastor Joy and it's my delight to welcome you this morning. We give God praise for the life he has given to us. We give him praise every single day he gives us is a blessing. Every single day God gives us is a present. Yes, is a gift. That is why it's called present. And what you do with the present matters. Our heart cry is that you will take this present called today and maximize it. He said, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. This is one of the ways to really utilize this day, this gift, this present. You maximize it. You hear the word of God and you listen to the word of God and use it as God has determined. When God speaks, he intends for us to listen. The reason why some people in their hard-heartedness come to the point where it looks as if you know, the, the, the things that events around their life overtakes them because they are not hearkening to the voice of the Lord. My prayer for you today is that as the Lord is speaking, every day he speaks, morning by morning, day unto day, he utters speech. My prayer for you is that we hear the word for you 
and you will hearken and then you will see your life become what God wants it to be. Praise the Lord. This is the Behold Your God. Throughout this week, we've been looking at the topic. As I have purposed it. As I have purposed it, that was what God said. He picked it in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, where God said, as I have taught, that is how it's going to come to pass. As I have purposed it, that is how it's going to stand. That is verse 25. He said, I will break the Assyrian in my land. Imagine the Assyrian. Imagine the enemy invading into the land of God himself. Yes, that was what the devil did. The devil there is, is seen as the Assyrian. He has so many disguises, but we find him out by his works. The Bible said, by the works we shall know them. The works of the devil is what we used to recognize him. Even if we try to paint himself in some ways and we don't recognize all his moves and his looks, but when we begin to see his works, we recognize who is behind the work. In this place, he's called the Assyrian. And the Lord began to prophesy very clearly. He said, I will break the Assyrian in my land. We've been able to establish the Assyrian is the enemy and all his works. We've been able to see that the land is God's own portion. Oh, he said, my portion is my people, my people that I've chosen out of the world. And the enemy has penetrated with his works. Oh my God. And the Lord said, I will break that Assyrian in my land. Imagine the land of God. Imagine the inheritance of God. We saw in, Isaiah, um, in the book of Psalm chapter 74 how the enemy invaded again. He said the people he purchased of old. His own inheritance, Mount Zion, where God dwelt. We saw how the enemy has done so many havoc. The Bible said, lift up your feet unto the perpetual realms. Oh, that the enemy has done wickedly in the sanctuary. Are we not seeing so many wicked display of the works of this Assyrian in this Mount Zion? God said, in my mountain, I will tread him down. He will tread down all the works of the devil. We saw in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, all of them, we did it this week. We saw that God called the church Mount Zion. So that explains to us what we are dealing with. Mount Zion, the city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem, that is what the church is called. And that is the Mount Zion God was talking about. And that is the prophecy God gave. God gave this prophecy long time explaining he knew the enemy will invade. Just like Apostle Paul was speaking in the book of Acts after he has labored for years in that particular country. He said, I'm living and I know that among you ravenous wolves will arise and they will not spare the flock. He began to give clear, specific expressions of what the Spirit of God is saying. And that is what we are having today. Yet, God has spoken long ago concerning all these activities. He said what? Oh, that the enemy have tried to do. We looked at it yesterday. It will be as a man that have been hungry and he dreamt where he was eating and by the time he woke up he would discover that he's still hungry as if he was thirsty and slept and he was drinking in the dream and woke up and discovered that he is still fainting out of the test that is how all the work the enemy have tried to do against Mount Zion will be. It will be a fertile work. It will not be productive. All that the devil is doing all of them ends in rubbish. And we also saw how God said, I will come down and fight for Mount Zion. Come on now. God said, I'm fighting for Mount Zion. I will come down like a lion, like a young lion. We read that in the book of Isaiah. Yes, verse 31, chapter 31, we saw it there. He said, I will come down and just like all the shepherds will be teamed together and they will be screaming and shouting against this lion. The lion won't even mind them. He won't even do as if there is anything happening. All the noise we mean nothing you know i look at that scripture and it's really really amazing because this is a lion you see the word picture god was painting this is a lion and this lion has come to take a prey and all the, the bible says several shepherds
house were screaming and shouting, making noise against the lion to terrify the lion. Yet, the lion is not disturbed. But we see where a young man, a young boy, about 17 years, called David, saw a live lion that came and took a prey. The Bible says he came after that lion and smote him and delivered the lamb. Probably is already bleeding because of the claws and the teeth of the lion. He delivered that lamb out of the mouth of the lion. And when the lion turned around to face him, he killed him. My God. But here we see another scenario where they said the shepherds gathered together. And he said, no matter their shoutings, it won't do him anything. We are seeing the movements of God. When it has to do with the prey that the devil wants to, we go after him and pick out those precious ones out of the grip of the devil. That is why you see us in places that are unusual, looking and hunting for the precious souls. I remember preaching at a particular place somewhere where there are you know some activities of, of of immorality going on in the night i remember picking my bible going there in the night that is when the activities is always the highest you see girls that they are they they, they sleep with them there and pay them money right there all manner of evil takes place there and there is a place where they drink and i usually go there anybody assisting there i'll share the gospel with them you know it's risky very late in the night around 11 12 1 a.m. You know, I remember the owner one day warning me, if I see you again, I will, I will, I will you know, that I am really spoiling his businesses. are people that come here, and I'm here trying to preach to them for them not to come there again. You know, there are businesses that are not really helping the work of God. That is why God talks about a genuine, decent handwork that God will bless. You know what? I remember meeting some people there, preaching to them, and they never came back there again. We go out there, those whom enemy has grabbed. We go after these souls. We snatch them out of the hand of the devil and we pray and preserve them some of them don't come back some of them we need to nourish them but we go after and what about this one god was describing he said i will come down i'll be like a young lion now this is talking about him coming after the prey and this time it is the devil's work he is coming about he said i will Come down and fight for Mount Zion. He talked about the shouting and the noise of the shepherds. This time around, I see those shepherds as face, fake shepherds. Those who don't take care of the sheep. Those who actually, you know, they feed on the sheep. They wound and bleed the sheep. God said, I will come down and fight for Mount Zion. And I see the Lord doing amazing things in this season. Because every false shepherd every false oppression found on mount zion in disguise as the lord comes down to fight for mount zion every one of them is going down in the name of jesus today i want to look at another aspect of this as i have proposed it now we've been able to establish that god has proposed the work god have declared what he wants to do and we see that the hand of god is already doing what he has promised to do where we are looking at is the people involved. And I want to read the book of Matthew chapter 2. I want to read verse 17 and 18. Now it says, Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet saying, verse 18, In Ramah was there a voice heard, Lamentation, I'm weeping, great mourning. Hmm. Rachel, weeping for her children and could not be comforted because they are not. It's a prophecy. Jeremiah prophesied it. Hundreds of years before Christ was born. And we saw that it is a fulfillment of that prophecy. Now, where are we going to as we pick up this? We see some people that became victims as the devil was going about to hinder the work of God. 
The Bible says that Rachel was weeping for her children because they are no more. And that was what we saw. When Herod went after the baby Jesus, he was fulfilling prophecy. We are dear babies that died, yes. These are conceptions that we are delivered. The Bible says from two years under, killed all the children within the same region where Jesus was born. Why? The devil is after his work. Our concern today is that as the devil who is going about to destroy the work of God, as God has said, I'm coming down to fight for Mount Zion. Jesus was never gotten. He fulfilled the destiny God gave. But what about those children that died? Have you ever considered the children that died in the time of Moses? We saw wreck. You see, what's her name? Jochebed. Jochebed is the mother of Moses. How she was able to arrange he, her, 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 her son out at that point by the wisdom given to her by God. And the boy was preserved in the same land. But we saw so many, so many mothers crying because their children were not. What happens? If you are living in this generation and you are careless not to be on God's own side, do you know that it is enough for you to be a victim? While the devil is after the attack of the church and the work of God, after the souls that God has gotten for himself, do you know that if you are neutral, you will be a victim? This is a call for you to choose this day where you stand because what God has declared is coming to pass and he is crying out. Anyone that hears his voice, do not harden your heart. You make up your mind to say this battle that is raging, where there are falsehood everywhere, I better hide myself under the cover of God himself. If you really know, if you really believe, if you really know that you had a creator for those whom the enemy have bought over in their perversion for them to deny the existence of God. It will be too late because the Bible says, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. Whether you bow now or you bow later, you must surely bow your knee to this creator. And if you know the reality of God, if you know the salvation God is offering and you are taking it for granted, I want to assure you that you will be a victim of what is going on now. The women thought they are, they are they, they, it was not this disease, it was not hunger that killed their children. It was the activities of the devil who was going after the work of God. And I tell you, there are so many people who are already victims. Victims of these operations of darkness. Some people that innocently walked into some churches. Oh, there is a new church that just opened in my neighborhood. Oh, there is this church that my brother just told me about. Let me just go and see what they are doing. Not knowing that you are entering the snare. Some people enter some places and they can't even come out because of the activities of what is going on here. Personally, in this land, I met someone who encountered us and encountered the power of God and she began to reveal some things that go on, she explained how they, how they do spells, how they uh, release spells for anyone that comes into the churches, both the old members and new members, they release spells that preserve the people within that ministry, and nothing will ever make them, they will see dreams, they will see frightening dreams, they will, a lot of things, and these are manipulations of wickedness, I look at this, I see how people are becoming victims of the work of the devil, the devil is trying to multiply so many things that looks like church, but it's not church, yet the genuine cannot shift for the evil, some people are ashamed to say I'm a pastor because they see that pastors' activities have so much multiplied in evil. Yet, you can't see the fake if there is no original. It is because there is an original. That is why the fake is there. And we cannot just shift because of the fake. We resist and declare that every fake activities in the work of God. You know what we do? We go forth to proclaim the word of God. We go out to reach out for the souls that are perishing. We go out to preach the good tidings to the meek. We tell that there is salvation on earth. And when this fake 
make ones come, it makes the work weary. But you know what? We are not shifting our ground, but our concern this morning is for those who are losing their lives, for those who have become captives of the devil, in case you have been involved in some falsehood, in case as a minister of the gospel you have struggled and you have come to the point where somebody began to introduce to you some things, you know, that was two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago? Yes. We are, we were with the servant of God, Reverend Okloa, and he began to tell us the experiences. We are, a, oh my God, evil everywhere in the land. Imagine a church that says you don't call the name of Jesus in our church and they register this as a church. Can't we see obvious works of wickedness? Yet, God has his people. Yet, God is working out dangerous things at this time to destroy the works of the devil. But as for you, my prayer is that you will not cry. The Bible says a voice was heard. Weeping. It will not be your voice weeping for the damages of these false oppressions. Some people's children have been molested because parents trusted their children to the hands of someone they believed to be a man of God. We've had several men of God that defiled innocent children because they were trusted with them. Weeping. What about the finances? We are men has been raped. They do, you know what? The word of God is very clear. And that is why you must hide yourself where the counsel of God has been expressed. When you are made to bring demands as if you are giving to God, the Lord said, freely we have received, freely we give. And when God places and lays in the heart of someone to be a blessing, it's a different thing. All this making demand and all this case is being released. It's not what people are being ripped, all in the name of God. Why we are making declarations for all these activities to be destroyed, for judgment of God to come upon anyone who has made merchandise of the people, we are also asking you that you yield yourself to God. Don't just seek God for what you think God is going to give to you. Seek him for who he is. He is not a father Christmas as we used to say. No, he's not. He's our heavenly father who delights in releasing good things for us. But he cannot release good things for us if you are still mingled in your sin, if you are still living in wickedness. We know these oppressions when people are promising prophecies and blessings upon people who are living in sin is a very clear indication, is a spot diagnosis that this one is a wrong oppression. We that preach the gospel will tell you depart from sin. Touch not anything unholy, anything unclean. Come out and be you holy, you that bear the vessels of God. But we see this false oppression promising people. The Bible says they promise them peace and ease, even in their wickedness. These are signs that these ones are not working for God. And if you are comfortable in a place where you see oppressions of darkness, it is a call for you to depart. That say, come you out from among them. And that is God's call for you today. And I want to make declarations for anyone who is already treading the path. You don't know how to severe yourself from it. The Lord is going to arrange circumstances to pull you out of every false oppression you have been involved in. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up our voice and pray for everyone who genuinely was seeking God and found themselves trapped in false oppressions. All these nets the enemy has spread and is pulling souls. We declare right now the net is tearing. We declare complete tearing of this net of wickedness. We declare men are released from the cloth of these demonic curses and spells they have pronounced over these people. Father, we declare that the influences released upon these people are, are, are broken. They lose their hold upon them. I ask in the name of Jesus that whatever it is that they have been involved in by covenant directly or indirectly, those covenants loses their hold in the name of Jesus. You know that you have been involved in some church activities, but you know you are living in sin. I want to announce 
announce to you that that is a false oppression. It is time for you to turn your back on those oppressions and face the Lord Jesus. We want to pray for anyone who sincerely wants to rededicate their life to Jesus, who says, I don't want my voice to be among those that will weep because of those that will be involved in false oppression. You may say, Lord, deliver my children from there, from every activity they have been involved in. Say, somebody hearing me, your children have been involved in these false churches. You don't know how to bring them out of it. The power of God is moving. He is going to break the hold he has on them. And in the name of Jesus, your voice will be refrained from weeping. Weep no more. Because the Lord is coming down to fight for Mount Zion. The church will be known for what it is. The Lord prophesied that there will be a clear demarcation between light and darkness. And that is what we declare today. Darkness is separated from the light. The light will be known for what it is. And darkness will be known for what it is. As for you, choose this day whom you will serve. Do you want to be with the devil? Or do you want to be with God? If you want to be with the devil, know certainly that his end will be your end. Jesus told us very clearly in the book of Matthew, very clearly, verse 24, he told us that this, verse 25, he said that this hell is meant for the devil and for all his agents. It's not meant for you, but you will land in hell if you continue to liaise with the devil, if you continue to join affiliation with the devil, but if you choose to come to the Lord, there is a criteria you must fulfill. Number one, you must recognize that Jesus is the Son of God. You must recognize that God send Jesus on earth to die for our sins that are all mankind and you must accept him as your Lord and Savior and you must receive him and then obey him. He be your Lord and he is your Savior. When you accept him as your Savior, that means he has washed you and cleansed you. You accept him as your Lord, that means he tells you what to do and if you come under him, the Bible says he gives you the power to live as a child of God. Any other thing in between is not it. Either light or darkness. And God is clearly making a clear demarcation between light and darkness. So choose you this day whom you will serve. The Lord commanded us to declare the word of God so that people can clearly see God as he is, to behold God as he is, and then you make your choice. My prayer for you today that you make a choice to seek God, and as you seek him, he said he will be found of you. We pray for everyone crying out to God and say, Father, have mercy. Father, we pray for every hungry soul. We pray for every thirsty soul. We pray for every confused soul. We pray for every battered soul. We pray for every depressed soul. We pray for every oppressed soul, everyone under the captivity of the devil, we pray in the name of Jesus, the intervention of heaven is coming upon you in the name of Jesus. We now begin to make our declarations today. Our time is almost up this morning, but we make declarations against every work of darkness. The Bible says, I've given you power over all the powers of the enemy. And this morning we lift up our voice in authority and we declare that every work of the devil for this reason the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. We declare today these works of the devil is destroyed over this region, over this territory, over the lives of men, over the work of your hands. The works of the devil are destroyed. The Bible says pull down tear down destroy all these false structures of the devil we arise and declare that every illegal structure of the devil in our system in our land we declare they are destroyed and we speak specifically against the unclean spirit that makes people to live unclean lives we bind you unclean demons we cast you out this day we declare the atmosphere is Realized by the power in the blood of Jesus. All this spell that is released in the atmosphere that makes people to have impure thoughts will come against you. All you unclean spirit in oppression will bind your activities. All the spells released that makes people to fall into immorality. We declare in the name of Jesus the atmosphere is saturated by the power of God. Father, we ask that everyone under, under the spirit of sedition 
seduction under the spirit of loss. We ask in the name of Jesus, let those influences be broken. We pray for everyone who has been trapped in the spirit of adultery and fornication. Father, deliver in the name of Jesus. You can cry out to God and say, Father, deliver me from the spirit of addiction. Some people are addicted into adultery. You are addicted into fornication. Today, if you cry out to the Lord, he is able to save you to the utmost. Every form of addiction in your life is breaking. Father, we declare your word and we ask our Father that the knowledge of the glory of yours cover the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. We declare in the name of Jesus that people are coming to the Lord in their droves. People are getting born again in the name of Jesus. We give God praise. We give him glory. Thank you, Abba Father. Today is Wednesday, the 13th of July. We call it blessed. We command that everything the enemy has projected into the day is frustrated. Any sudden accident the devil has planned, we cancel it. Any sudden death, we cancel it. Only those whose their time have come to die are those who are permitted to go. For anyone whom the enemy wants to cut their life before the time we resist it, we, re we retrieve that arrow of death and send it back to where it came from. We ask for healing for anyone that needs healing in their body or in their mind, anyone that needs their finances to be healed, we ask for the healing of God to be released upon you. You go forth into the work of your hands. The work of your hands are blessed. You are not lazy. You are working with your hands. You will see the fruit of your labor. And in case you are do, you are into some dubious things, I tell you, the word of God warned you in the book of James. Desist from that. Trust God to give you strategies to work genuinely and to make your profit in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Have a beautiful day. Today is our Bible study in church. We are using Hotel Dakota in, in Teshi here, opposite the police station. Uh, police station, yes. Just adjacent to the police station. And we'll be looking forward to welcome you to have the time. We are also having what we call relationship realities. It's a time we look at some details about what God really ha will have us to live our life as spouses, as parents, as whatever. So, it will be a pleasure to have you if you're in Great Accra region. The Lord bless you. If you're not, find a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church. Ask the Lord to lead you to where the word of God is taught in its wholeness. And your life will never remain the same again. God bless you till I come your way again. My name is Pastor Joy. And this is Behold Your God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey. Ah, sha -da 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 -da. Mashi de de su kalababa. Hey.